Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Talk Kashrus, presented by the Kashrus Awareness Project in conjunction with Torah Anytime. Today we are joined by Rabbi David Cohn, Rabbinic Coordinator at the CRC, the Chicago Rabbinical Council. Thank you Rabbi Cohn for coming once again. Sure, great to be here. Today we'd like to discuss medications and kashras, specifically capsules and tablets and things like that. What concerns should the kosher consumer have when ingesting or purchasing capsule medications? Okay, so to answer that question, I'm gonna take a step a little to the side and help us realize what there is. And that is, the halacha sees, has three different categories for how we judge something as being edible or not. Okay, and that is to say is, the only things we can't eat are things that are edible. So if something is edible, a piece of cake, then it needs to be kosher. That's obvious, that's the most obvious example. The only person who could eat a non-kosher piece of cake would be someone who, his life is in danger, okay? That would be, that's one, one thing. The next step is, the Gemara says, if something is not edible, like moldy bread, okay? It's not edible at all, no one could eat that. Um, that food, even if it's not kosher, you can eat it. It doesn't make a difference. The isurim don't apply to that food. Um, so an ex that, an example of that would be is, what we consider an example of that is, a regular tablet, a tablet you just swallow. That's considered not edible, and if you don't know, just take a bite one into one tomorrow, and you'll see how inedible it is, and that's not considered edible, and a person can, can swallow it. Those are the two extreme and the more obvious categories. But there's a third category, and that's called shaloi kedar hachila. Shaloi kedar hachila means it's a food that's actually edible, but, or it's used as an ingredient, but no one eats it in this form. Mm -hmm. The Gemara's example of that is someone who drinks vinegar, who eats black pepper. Okay, if vinegar is a food item. If you use it all the time as, as, as a food item, but nobody drinks vinegar straight. So if a person drinks vinegar, they've eaten some, they've swallowed something that's edible, but they did so in a way that's not the way people eat this food. Okay, so that food, when a person eats shaloi kedar hachila, that is also midrabbanan to do it. It's not as bad as eating a tray piece of cake, that's not, it's not as bad as that, but it's also not the same as eating something that's inedible. It's an in-between stage, which is in shalai kedar hachila. Now, if I, many people would think, well, shalai, what happens if I just take a food and I swallow it whole without chewing it? Okay, I take, I take I know, a piece of tray hamburger and I swallow it without chewing it. The Gemara says that is considered kedar hachila. Chewing is not what makes a difference. It's that no one eats the food in this form. Mm -hmm. So now, now let's apply that to a very specific case, which is gel caps. Okay? Gel caps are different than tablets in that the gel cap itself, there are, two, there are two types of gel caps. There's the one that looks like it has two pieces attached to each other, like, mm -hmm. and then the other one that looks like a little mini football, it's a little soft and squishy. Okay? Both of those are made, the, the outside of it, it looks like it's plastic, but it's not. The outside of it is gelatin. Okay, gelatin is a non-kosher item. Come, I mean, you could make kosher gelatin, but by and large, it's always made from non-kosher animals, pig skins, actually. Um, and a, the, the ones that come apart that look like two pieces is 100% gelatin. Mm -hmm. The one that's in the soft one is gelatin with a few other ingredients that are all, again, food ingredients. Mm -hmm. Now, but these are food ingredients that are not used as is. Nobody eats, swallows gelatin as is. But if you took that gel cap and put it into your milk, you could make yogurt out of it. It would thicken your yogurt if you wanted to. It worked just like gelatin, like make candies with it as a gelatin for anything else. It's a perfectly fine food ingredient. So to eat it as is, to swallow it with, to, to eat it without mixing into other foods, that's shloi kedar hachilo. That's, that's <clears throat> like the person who drinks vinegar. He's taking something, he's eating something that inherently is edible, it's a perfectly fine food ingredient, but he's eating it in a way that nobody eats it. Not because he swallows it, but because he ate it pure, without mixing it with other mm -hmm. foods, and that's considered shloi kedar hachilo. So that is permitted for a person who's a certain level of sickness. He doesn't have to be yeshua sakana, doesn't have to have his life in danger, but he has to be so sick that he's like incapacitated. He's not functional, he can't sleep, or he can't go, he can't get out of bed, or he can't do his regular normal functioning. That person is allowed to take um, an item like this, which is shloi kedar hachilo. He could take a gel cap, with one more caveat, and that is, he also has to have no other options. So, if I have a headache, um, and I'm a really terrible headache, and I'm, I'm, I would consider myself incapacitated, in theory, I could have a gel cap. But if I could have it, the same medicine in pill form, then I should take it in pill form, because I have an option. What else if I can't swallow, because I can only swallow gel caps, and I'm sick enough, and I can have the gel cap. Um, so, in, it really, for, 
for, for many adult items, items that adults would take, if it's in a tablet form, they can take it if they're not well. As opposed to a gel cap, it depends on how sick they are and whether there are any alternatives, an option of taking some other medicine. So I just want to ask a specific scenario, just to bring it down to a practical level. Let's say you have someone who's not Nuffalo Mishkov, they're not incapacitated the way, the way you said, but they have a condition, let's say acid reflux, which is a good example because they could probably survive a few days without their medication. Many people are like that. But if it goes for more than a few days, suddenly they're, they're in discomfort, but their doctor prescribed for them a gel cap medication to deal with their condition. What category would that person fall into? Okay, so in every case, it's very case specific. We really needs a rabbinic guidance on that, which is says rather this is how sick I am. Um, should I take it or should I not take it? The general rule is, what will they turn into? They don't have to be feeling incapacitated now. If I don't take my medicine, will I become incapacitated or I'll just have uh, another kvetch and I won't be feeling so great even in a few days from now. But that's a judgment. It's a very much judgment case for mm -hmm. one person having heartburn is this bad and one person having heartburn is that, is that bad. And they have to judge or turn to the rabbi and ask them and say, am I sick enough that I can take a gel cap? Or, and either the answer is yes or the answer is find an alternative. There's something to try another medicine that might do the same trick. You know? So it's very individualized. Now, that's with gel caps. Are there any other concerns with tablets? So there's one other type, not so common for adults, more for children, and that is a chewable medicines. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are chewable medicines. Right, right. Um, Chewable medicines, most consider them that they are considered edible. Um, they taste good enough to be considered edible. And one ingredient in the chewable medicine is a problem. So they tend to not have too many sensitive ingredients in them. They tend to be pretty straightforward. That's the the flavor is the flavor. They have a, fl they have a flavor. flavor. So we flavor, we'd say, only for a person who has a certain amount of illness to them. Um, but there are actually some that the, the base of the chewable pill is lactose. Lactose comes from cheese. It's a byproduct of making cheese, and it is kosher sensitive. Um, so those, if they're in a chewable form, a person should be aware and really, or just look at the ingredients. Or ask someone who's, you know, who knows about kosher ingredients to say, look at these ingredients, do they seem okay? It's a common question, ask the hashkacha, say, mm -hmm. I want to take this chewable, or my, my five-year-old is going to take this chewable medicine or whatever, and can they take it? And they'll read off the ingredients and help them judge whether it's okay. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome.